So then the profile list model is actually just a very thin wrapper around, currently just around a collection of profile models. All right, cool. So now let's go down into our views and we'll go ahead and create a profile directory. We're going to, we are going to create a new profiles or a profile folder in our views. And then I'm just going to add two views here, index.cshtml, which will be our profile index that our admin users will have access to. And then we're going to add another one here and we're going to call it detail. Okay, so we're going to just delete the standard razor placeholder stuff that we have here. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually put a using at the top of this view. And you'll see why in a moment here. We're going to be using Microsoft.ASP.NetCore.Identity. And we're going to go ahead and inject a user manager here, passing it our application user type. And we'll call it user manager. And we need to explicitly namespace this, I believe. Okay, so now we'll have access to a user manager actually right inside the view, which is kind of nice. And for our model, we're going to be using user.profile model. Okay, so we're going to have a div class container body content. We're going to have a div class row section header. We'll have our section heading. And then what we're going to say here is if the user, and now I just want to show you, like if you say had the ability to deactivate users, for instance, if that's something you'd like to add to your uh, the functionality of this uh, of this application, it's not something we'll be, we're going to be covering here, um, but it would be quite simple to implement just having like this boolean is active property on your users. What you could do is maybe have like a disable user button here if the user that's visiting this page is an admin. And the way that that would look is we'd actually look into the user's roles. And we're gonna get deeper into that here in just a few moments. But um, what we say is if user is in role and then pass it a string corresponding to the role that you've defined as um, your admin role. And so there's a table that Identity has provided for us um, that was part of our initial migration um, that's actually called ASP.NET User Roles. And um, you can populate that with any type of role that you prefer to kind of have almost like a, like a sort of role matrix, if you will. You know, users can have multiple roles. Um, so you might define roles for admin users or forum moderators, for instance, and then just like your standard users. But what you could do is you could say, like, have a button here um, for deactivating a user. And maybe you only want to show that if the user who's visiting this profile page is, is an administrator. And then you could wire up that logic yourself. Um, but I'm just showing you how we can kind of have some additional logic here based on user roles, even right within our view. So that's all good. Um, we're just going to leave that out of our application or the one that I'm building anyway. But I would definitely encourage you, um, if you're feeling comfortable with it, to go ahead and, and implement some interesting features like that with your own application. Okay, um, so now we'll have a div class row user profile. Go ahead and make kind of a simplistic row with a few columns in it here for our um, our profile page.
And here what I'd like to do is to say, um, so we show the user's image here, their profile image. What I'm gonna say is if user identity.name is equal to our model that username. So we're going to create a form here. And then we need an encoding type of multi part slash form data. And that's important because we're trying to post the file up. And if you didn't have this um, and you tried to post a file up with the form, it just wouldn't post. So that's why we have this special um, ENC type. And we'll have an action here called upload profile image. And now we're going to do some kind of trickery here so that basically we style our file input as a button instead of uh, the default HTML file input, which doesn't look so good. So we have a file input type. We'll name it file, and then we'll set display to none. And then we'll have a submit button here as well. We could get a little more elegant and have some JavaScript that automatically posts this once it sees that it has a attached a file to the form. but I'll go ahead and save that as a future exercise here. And we'll just use a standard submit button to post this form up. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just paste the remainder of this markup here because it's just a little bit. And this is the part that is the second column which kind of shows us just the basic user information. And it looks like I forgot a property on our model. Yeah, our is admin property. We are going to go ahead and add a bool is admin on our user model and implement it um, with a very simple logic of actually just showing a, an, it, an admin tag, um, like a sort of a highlight tag for admin users on their post replies and on their profile. Okay, let's go ahead and build, and probably our profile controller was left um, unfinished. So we're probably going to get a failed build on that. Okay, so we'll double click here, and yeah, in our profile controller, let's go ahead and fill out our profile model now. And we're going to go ahead and build out a user service to go ahead and grab the instance of this user that we can then map to this model. And so we'll pass it this ID. And if we head over to our application user service in our service layer, and then we just scroll down, you can see that get by ID is going to get the user whose ID just corresponds to this primary key, just like sort of the rest of our get by ID methods in our service layer. And so we can just go ahead and start mapping those entity models here. All right, and then lastly we have this is admin. And the way that I'm gonna do this is go ahead and specify another variable here in our method called user roles. And we're gonna use the user manager that we've injected into this controller. And then we've got a ton of different methods here on the user manager that we could use um, to do any number of different things. One of the things we can actually do is get roles async and we can pass it 
our user object and then just call dot result. And so this get roles async is asynchronous as the method name implies. And so when we call result on it, it's going to return the result from this uh, task, which in this case is the collection of user roles. So you can see if you hover over get roles async, this is an awaitable. And so um, this is a task which returns this iList string and the result returns the generic iList string. Okay, so now I'm going to say is admin is the case when user roles dot contains the string admin. 